Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was gonna go over a basic skills math test. It's a 10 problem test. There's a link to it in the description. I'll just work the problems really slowly uh, and show you how to do them. The way I would do it is click on that link, print out the exam, pause the video, do the problems yourself, maybe a few at a time, play the video, see how I did them, and then check your work against mine and hopefully it'll help you out. These are kind of standardized math tests for just about any uh, trade entrance exam, any union entrance exam, nursing entrance exam. This is really the starting place on basic math skills. So I'll put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. So basic math test, um, it's really kind of the standard for any trade union entrance exam, nursing entrance exam, armed services exam. A couple tips and tricks. One is you certainly want to mark it up as much as you possibly can. Um, so if you move on and you don't finish that problem, you could go back and check your work or continue on where you left off. The hardest problem has the same weight as the easiest problem, so don't make any careless mistakes. And then the other thing I do as well is before I even start, I look at the problem and then I look at the answers. And just by doing that, I could tell I'm looking for a division answer with a remainder. That's what that R stands for. So I have 491 divided by a 9. 9 goes into 49 5 times to give me 45. 9 minus 5 is 4. Bring down that 141. 9 goes into 41 4 times to give me 36. 41 minus 36 is 5. There's nothing left to bring down, so that's my remainder. So I'm at 54, remainder 5. I go over here and I see its answer a. So there's the first problem right there. Second problem will be 703 divided by a 6. 6 goes into 7 one time, right up below. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 0. 6 goes into 10 one time. 10 minus 6 is 4. Bring down that 3, 43. 6 goes into 43 seven times to give me 42. 3 minus 2 is 1, nothing left to bring down. That's my remainder. So this would be 117 and 16, or 117 and a remainder of 1. I look over here and it's answer B. Number 3, express 71 one thousandths as a decimal. So if I had a decimal point one, two, three, four, this is my tens place, this is one tenth. This is my hundredths place, so that would be two one hundredths. This is my thousandths place, three one thousandths, and this is four ten thousandths. So I have 71 one thousandths, that would be up to this place right here, and it would be 71 in this place and this place. So it would be 0 0.071. I look over here and it's answer C. All right, let's turn the page to number four, adding decimals. The way I add and subtract decimals is I line up the decimal point. So I have 4.7 plus 0.9 plus 0 0.01. All my decimal points are lined up right there. No values here. So this would be zero. As I'm adding straight down here, I just add these numbers together, get a one, nothing to carry. Seven and nine is 16. I carry the one. Four and one is five. I have this decimal point. I bring it straight down and keep it right there to get 5.61, or number four would be answer C. Pause this and do the problems yourself. And go to number five. Number five, I'm multiplying decimals, so I, I don't line them up here, I keep track of them. And I'll show you how I do that. So I have 0 0.33 times 0 0.59. Multiplication is commutative, so I could be either way. I'm gonna do the nine times this thing, hold a placeholder, and then five times that and add that together. So nine times three is 27, carry the two. Nine times three is 27 plus that to 29. I have that placeholder. 
right here. And now I'm going to do 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus that 1 is 16. Now I'm going to add those together. 7, 9, and 5 is 14. Carry the 1, right? 9 and 5 is 14, carry the 1. 8 and 1 is 9. And then 1, I'm all done. Now I go back and I look at my decimal places. I'm over 1, 2, 3, 4. So I come over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have 0 0.1947. 0 0.1947 is answer A. Number six, I'm dividing fraction, uh, dividing by decimals. So I have 0.84 divided by 0.7. The way I do this is I move this decimal place over till I get an integer here. So I move it over one and I do that here. And then once I have the decimal here, I move it up. So seven goes into eight one time. I write it down below. Eight minus seven is one. Bring down the four. Seven goes into 14 two times. And I end with 1.2. I look down here, and that's answer D. So six is D. Number seven down here, express the 10 thousandths place. This place values key. This right here is a ones place on the left side of the decimal. And then on the right side of the decimal, this is my one tenth, one hundredths. That eight is my one one thousandths. And that nine is my one ten thousandths place. So express the ten thousandths place. It's going to be that nine right there. And that would be answer C. All right, let's turn the page. It's number eight here. I'm subtracting decimals. I'm going to go 0.87 minus 0.48. Here again, adding and subtracting, I line up those decimal points. I cannot go seven minus eight because seven's larger. I'm sorry, eight's larger than seven, so I have to borrow. I'm going to borrow from the tenths place. I'm going to borrow one tenths to make this seven, and that's going to give me 10 one hundredths. The 10 and the seven give me 17. 17 minus eight is nine. Seven minus four is three. And I end with 0.39, or answer, problem eight, answer A. Number nine, round this number 3.864 to the nearest tenth. The tenths is the one tenths. That place is right after the decimal point. The hundredths is a six, so I round up. It's greater than five, so I round up. I round that up to 3.9, and that's to the tenths place, so that's answer A. This is rounded to the hundredths place. This is rounded to the ones, and this is to the hundredths as well. Lastly, number 10 here, which is the equivalent decimal number to 49 thousandths, 49 thousandths. So 49 thousandths, again, would be, this is my ones, my tenths, my thousandths, I'm sorry, this is my one tenth, one hundred, one thousandths place. So we're in that place, and that be a 49. So this would be 0 0.049. So point zero four nine is answer C right there. Um, you could do long division here, but you could see here that if I go over one, two, three, that would give me a one. I'd have to go over one, two, three, point zero four nine. So forty nine thousandths is point zero four nine. All right. Well, I sure hope me going through this test helped you out. Uh, please comment below if you are taking a standardized math test and where you're taking it might help uh, other people watching these videos out. Uh, if you like the video, hit like. And this is Colfax Math, the practical math channel.